This is the World Country Church of Christ in Umber, Texas. This is Wednesday, midweek Bible study, January 31st, 2024. This is additional part. This will be part uh, number 15, which in, includes our understanding of the Jerusalem church. And the title is still as we will continue, the self-destruction of saints. Is mind blowing. The self destruction of saints is mind blowing. Ecclesiastes seven thirteen through twenty nine is the text that we began with, and so now we will deal uh, with this thought. The church uh, at Jerusalem. Now, this particular thought that we have, the church at Jerusalem, is actually going to be part sixteen. Why? Because we started fifteen on Sunday, and what we're dealing with is a church. That has allowed its authority to go beyond what's written. And they have gone down to another church in Antioch where Paul and Barnabas happen to be dispatched regularly. And so they have began to, as some churches do, attack other congregations with false doctrine. And so therefore we'll pick right up uh, from there and we will deal uh, with this particular topic uh, from the book of Acts. Again, chapter number 15, we will be beginning at verse 1. As we mentioned, saints, that we talked about, we were going to do this series, this kick off the new year, just about done. Uh, many different characters, both men and women, have been explained also in the other portion uh, that we dealt with, which is uh, the many ways God pays back uh, disobedient children and disobedient people period just to let us understand and know that the lord is not going to let that go it's a lot of self-destruction some made it some did not and so what's happening we see in acts 15 and 1 it says and certain men which came down from judea taught the brethren and said except you be circumcised after the man of moses you cannot be saved that's a very awful statement when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, he determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there arose up certain of the sect of Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So we've got a statement, bold, you cannot be saved unless you are circumcised according to the law of Moses. And now, in addition to that bold statement, you must keep the law of Moses. So they're trying to do what was presented to the Galatian church. You have to have both the law of Moses, its uh, uh, instructions, combined and submerged with the perfect law of liberty Christ. Now we know that's nonsense, but they shook up Galatia and they're going to shake up Antioch as well. But what you have is a case where the apostles didn't send them out and there's no agreement that the elders sent them out but what is prevalent is you have some brethren out there that are kind of saying like this is in our heart well, this is kind of hey they make a good point but no they didn't so this is what you have sometime in the church when you have individuals who are going to talk about things that are not in the bible you've got a few other people that have said we didn't tell them go but we like to hear what they're talking about orpheus hayward I remember before he began to go off track with say publicly, uh, I don't think you can be justified using musical instruments in worship. But I'd like to hear why my brethren are doing it. Which is like you say, I don't believe that there's another God, but I'd like to hear why some people are worshiping another God. You know, it's just like, so what are you going to hear from them? The argument that can convince you that they're right? It's so ridiculous, but you know, that, that's his life. And the sad thing about him is that he has multiple videos that were online. I don't know if he's removed them. Uh, they may still be there, but one brother captured them. 
and put them right under the new stuff he teaches and shows it's the same guy teaching two different things. Well, of course, he'll go like, well, I learned when you learn better, you do better, all kind of stuff. Like, you know. And those guys are washed out, like rejects from a pilot course, you know, they've washed out. Uh, they've been cut from the team of the Lord, you know, and uh, you know, they're, they're no longer not even on the bench. They're, they're on Satan's team, and it is what it is. You know, uh, uh, we read and believe in the saved, and that's how we're going to keep it. So these guys are pretty bold coming from the Jerusalem church, which is where the church started. That's a very powerful statement and can easily be believed because of who's saying it. It's so powerful. They've got an apostle that is stationed with them, Barnabas, I mean Paul, and Barnabas is one of the messengers that work with Paul, but this is a bona fide apostle Paul. And this guy is told you need to go down there and talk to them because they're disputing Paul and Barnabas that the Jerusalem people are right. They are teaching truth, which is ridiculous. And so let's see what happens now. So we're in Acts chapter 15. And so they're going to start the, the debate. Verse 6. And the apostles and elders came for the guests to consider this matter. When they had been much disputed, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us. And the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Notice what the Holy Ghost was when Cornelius received him again speaking in tongues. And this is why I hear a little doubt a little. Here the Holy Ghost is identified as being a witness that they are now accepted candidates to hear the gospel and be saved. Why is that necessary? Under the Jewish system, which Moses brought forth and the priests of hell, you had to first become a proselyte. You went through a ceremonial cleansing of sorts, and then you were a proselyte, no matter what race you were, color, size, whatever, status. And everybody so far that, until you get to Acts 10, that were being saved. Well, those who are the proselytes are Jews. And so Peter notes that because the Holy Ghost gave the witness, the witness that we find the Holy Ghost gave is, again, we can see in Acts chapter 10 to identify they weren't saved. They received the signal of the Holy Ghost because Peter and them has a problem with baptizing these individuals. But we can see in Acts 10, in verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, this is him preaching to Cornelius, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word. And they, the circumstances which believed, were astonished. They're like, what? As many as came with Peter. Because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, so poured out, different terminology. For they heard them speak with tongue and magnify God. They answered Peter, can any man forbid water? That he should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then pray they him to tarry certain days. And we'll go back now to Acts 15. This is the reference he's making in Acts chapter 15 when he says, gave them the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost uh, given to them was a witness. Verse 9. And put no difference between us and them. See, this was the key. There was a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles who had not yet become proselytes. So it says, the Holy Ghost puts no difference. And this is the signal, so this is what it is. Some people want to make this, well, this is the indwelling of the Spirit. It is not. Because Peter and them received this outpouring after the Holy Ghost was in them. So how much Holy Ghost do you need? I mean, my goodness, so this is a different attribute. The people who get baptized on the day of Pentecost, Peter tells them that you will receive the Holy Spirit 
and they speak no tongue. You think, how do we know? Because it says the apostles are the ones. Doing. You can go to 1 Corinthians 12, and we will validate those people did not do any tongue speaking or any miracles of any kind. Now let's validate This is what we want to do. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians, because I know somebody is going to lie in the denominational world and even among our own brethren. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to validate this thing. We're going to go down to verse number 28. And it says, And God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. All this wasn't in existence on the day of Pentecost. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps government diverse the time. The gift of tongues is not given out until, notice what he says clearly, the governments are set in place. This is a, this is a chronological order. There were no prophets speak until first the apostles died. All this don't happen on the day of Pentecost. It's ridiculous. And so we understand, so now this is how you use to help the denomination church be validated. You guys are wrong, and members of the Church of Christ to say that you have to speak in tongues or do anything, even in the first century, upon baptism. See, that's, that's something they say. Uh, tongues were a sign. No, no, no. Not until it's given to everyone. So this thing people have to understand. Today, no one has that. And in the first century, there would have not been any worshipers of Diana getting this at all. Because you have to be baptized into Christ to be a candidate at some point. To receive tongues. And everyone did not speak in tongues. Let's validate. See that's the law they tell. Tongues were a sign. They did. Now if the next few verses I read. Says all spoken tongues. Then I'm wrong. That's going to read. Verse 29. Are all apostles. See this is what we call rhetorical statements. Each one will be no. There will not be a yes out of any of these. That's it's rhetoric. It goes back and forth. Now, if somebody says, is there one true God? And it's in this question. Well, it's going to mess up the whole scheme. So you, everything in here will be no. It says are all apostles, no. All prophets, no. All teachers, no. Are all workers of miracles, no. Verse number 30. Have all the gifts of healing, no. Do all speak with tongues, no. Notice that. Do all interpret, no. But cover earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I you a more excellent way. And you got to get into chapter 13 and talk about if you spoke the tongue of angels and have not love, it's prophecy you none. So this is important. And brethren, God bless you. And those who are listening, this is how we teach in the church. This is how we stay balanced. I was riding around this week, and I was looking about left and right at different things going on and thinking about stuff that happened. And I said, I remember when I was in sin, God, sorry, speaking to the Lord. I said, I did not know where everything should go and how things should be. I'm talking about as a saint when I left the church years ago. And, but I still knew where you were. I still knew where truth was. But I did not know what place. And I said, I had my vision back again, like before I left. I know where things go. I know why this person is crazy. I mean, just like that. I said, they're sinner. This one is a liar. And I know because it was coming to my mouth. This is my brother over here. He's lying. This is my brother over here. He's confused. This is my sister over there. But she's speaking true. I know what things are. I know where my family place is. I know where my family is at. Well, those need to adjust things as far as what I can see. I know where I'm at. Because I'm balanced. Now I was praising him. I said when I was out there in the world. Even being a saint. I don't know where to put things. I would tell people, you need to go to the Church of Christ. That's much I can do. Because I knew I was a crook. I couldn't do much debating, battling, helping. But I still knew where the truth was. I wasn't fixing to go to those ridiculous false doctrine places. All the Muslim, Buddhists, or Hindu. But I still was lost. Because I had stepped away from the presence of the Lord. So, why am I saying that? In the Church of Christ, we know what we're saying. Don't let's be true. We well, understand this text is validation that there is no time speaking today. The chapter 13 verse 8 literally says it's going to go away. Yeah. The only thing lacking is the completion of the letter he's even writing right now. Proving that is the only thing that has not been complete. Christ has done his work. Luke explains that. 24, 44, Father. 
his work of peace. He said, all the things about me, I've done. He said, everything. Moses, Saul's, and prophets. Man, I, I, I finished my work. So there's nothing else to do but to complete the text to be written. And we understand that John hasn't written his, Paul is writing his, everything's still being accumulated. Nothing is complete and final uh, as we know of. We cannot validate anything, but we know this hell is not done because he's writing it. So whatever John has to write, whatever the others have to write, we do know one thing for sure. This letter is not done. And that's the thing. We see other letters floating, Peter says, and all his epistles. So there's all types of stuff being written. But here's the key. So why are we saying that? Because let's go back to Acts now. This Jerusalem church is like a lot of congregations. They want to profess something that is not valid because of emotions or a connected tie to that idea. Brother Hamilton. God bless you, good lesson. Uh, I was thinking about, thinking about this lesson and just kind of looking at it from, uh, from the other end, right? Uh, because you may find yourself on the, uh, the wrong side of the debate. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and it's important for us as saints to know what to do when that happens. Yes. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, sometimes we can get caught up in a point, we, we see a scripture or... You know, we, we start to like really go, we get unbalanced in our judgment on a thing mm -hmm. because the way we feel about it or whatever, some experience you had that kind of make you be like, people shouldn't do this kind of stuff, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It happens. You know what I'm saying? People get zealous about stuff. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, this scripture it teaches us how we ought to respond when we realize that we're wrong Amen. or how, how to identify if you're wrong even because, because, because. Like it, it's it's gonna happen. Um, I remember, I remember um, um, me and Nelson were talking just about um, disagreements in the church, uh -huh. right? And like it's like man, it's gonna happen. Uh -huh. You you gonna like people think, especially when you're young in the faith, you think that the church is perfect, which of course the church is perfect. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But then you misunderstand that. The church still has issues because you got people in it that have issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and so uh, you, 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 there's one faith, mm -hmm. but people get on the wrong side of the faith sometimes. They, 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 they be tripping. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but it, so it's important to understand, like, just because saints trip sometimes, and you may be one of those saints that are tripping. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that the church that you have to panic and like the church is messed up. Like, no, not like it's okay. And there's a solution to that when that happens. It's going to happen. People are going to disagree. People are going to think somebody going to think both people are going. They have opposite uh, beliefs, and they both going to think they're right. So then, how is that resolved? Mm. It's not resolved like the world where somebody just whoever the most eloquent, whoever got the most money, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, are they just are they just kind of like get their factions and they just existence you know what i'm saying like they're like cohabitating this place like no there's a way that that god has taught us how we ought to settle disputes that's right and it's the it's it's through respect of the word that's right and so i say that because um so like at no point when when these people start to teach this stuff about the law and about the circumcision of moses at no point was the stuff that Peter says in later chat, later later verses, not true. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Amen. Like this is after Cornelius' conversion. Mm -hmm. Peter mentions Cornelius, uh, Cornelius' conversion in in his in his validation as to why what they're saying is not true. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what this is. This is this is a debate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, um, like that was true when they first started teaching that. Amen. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and and the reason I'm saying it is because sometimes you can get caught up in like like I said your eyes are set on a point or a feel, whatever it mm -hmm. is. And so you're not looking at the big picture. Mm -mm. Certain scriptures you're not considering because you, your mind is so focused on mm -hmm. trying to prove this point is right or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, but you have to be honest and humble enough to realize that like, yo, listen, I can be wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be afraid to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, because at the end of the day, the objective is not to... <clears throat> The objective should never be as a saint to win the argument. Right, right. The objective should be that the truth be spoken. That's it. That, that is the objective. That's now, right. if I should be confident in what I'm saying, 
Right. But you should also have the scripture to be able to validate what you're saying, not just with what, that your argument sounds good. Like that's not that's not what this is. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and so you have to be humble enough to say, okay, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say with full confidence, but I'm gonna listen to what the other person has to say, just in case I'm wrong. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you can get so caught up on your point that you're not paying attention to the other evidence that's all that's already exists, that's already around. So anyway, so I'm saying, um, uh, verse seven. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up. They going back and forth arguing, back and forth mm. presenting points. Let's not even let's not even say arguing per se. Mm. Let's just say they going back and forth presenting points. You know what mm. I'm saying? At this point, then you know uh, it got it got you know they getting emotional or like zealous. Right. right. <laughs> Peter yeah. rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us. That the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of God, mm -hmm. uh, hear, hear the word of the gospel, and believe. He said, "So you know this." Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, right? So this is something they. This wasn't like secret stuff. That's right. This is stuff that was already known. The answer. So the answer to this question, this debate, was already available. That's it. Peter's just pointing out, like, <laughs> this is what you're missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. He says, "And God, which knoweth the hearts, of, which knoweth the hearts." Bear them witness, mm -hmm. giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So, once again, he states a fact. God knows the hearts. That's right. Nobody in there can dispute that. No. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, either you're going to be humble enough to say, that is true. Amen. Or you're going to be right. like, that's right. yeah. I'm going to find the trouble right away to fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then that shows that you're not sincere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Once again, a fact. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so he says, Now therefore, why tempt you God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Another yeah. fact. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Now verse 12 is key. Mm -hmm. It says, Then all the multitude kept silence. That's it. And so, and so, that's and that's what, you have to be humble enough Praise God. to, like, if you, if, if you get put back on the ropes, and that's a good thing, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You have to be humble enough just to be shut your like, keep your hold your peace, keep That's your it. mouth closed, Amen. And, and like okay, because and I'm done, because nah, really. no 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 because because this is the kind of stuff that like this goes all the way back to your lesson. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of stuff that causes issues in the brotherhood. That's it. It causes dissension. Mm -hmm. It causes confusion. Mm -hmm. It causes the the loss of faith among saints. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It causes shipwreck. As, yes. as you mentioned, you mentioned your point in your personal life, you know, your personal walk with God. Amen. Um, because instead of you being humble and sincere about mm -hmm. what you're doing and sincere about your faith, that I just want to do what's right inside of God, mm -hmm. you get caught up and puffed up in like your mm -hmm. own mind. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. But but that should never be the objective. Amen. The objective should always be I, let God be true and every man alive, including <laughs> myself. You know what I'm saying? I could, I could be really, I could be really like, like I said, like you can get, I, I've said this so, so time, but I just want to make sure that it's clear. You can be so amped up about something yeah. that like you, you're convinced that you're right. Yeah. In your head, the argument that you put together makes sense. Uh -huh. And so like you like, bro, now like you going like full hundred miles an hour. Like, mm -hmm. but you know that when the truth is spoken, you know Okay, mm -hmm. you got to mm -hmm. be honest enough to say, okay, that's true. Right. What, the, what he just said is true, and if it contradicts what I'm saying, I got to back up off of it. Amen. I got to be humble enough because it ain't about me being right. Right, it's about the truth being promoted. That's Amen. what that's what it's all about. Amen. You know, what I mean, so like, you know, in order for us to have peace amongst the brethren, in order for us to be a light mm -hmm. to each other and to the world. Mm -hmm. You have to be sincere, amen, and and mm -hmm. and decrease so that God can increase. That's right. And like, fight for truth, contend for the faith, but always make sure that you're contending for the faith and not your faith. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because like, yeah, like it ain't about winning sure. arguments. It's not about. That's right. And I'm gonna say this, and I'm done. The Bible teaches us in Titus. Um, uh, he told Paul, told him to stop the mouth of the gain of the of the of the, of the gainsayer. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the person going to stop talking. Mm -hmm. What it means is, is that you've proven the point. Oh, yeah. So Good. that so exactly. that they can they no longer have an argument to stand on. Yeah, exactly. They may keep talking. They may keep be like, no, that ain't right. That, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you cannot withstand. You can't stand against or disprove the, 
what's been the point that's been made. Amen. That's when his mouth has been stopped. What that's else right. you gonna say? Well, answer this question for me. Like 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 Jesus did the Pharisees and Sadducees. Mm-hmm. Answer this question for me. We cannot answer your question. Now, they don't stop them from, they don't make them, they're going to believe in Jesus now. They're going to stop right. teaching the stuff they teach. No. They're going to keep doing all, they're going to keep doing all the same as they were doing before. Right. But at the end of the day, I asked them this question, at, they answered this question. Yeah. I can't answer. Their mouth has officially been stopped. Yeah. They're just showing their insincerity by keep going. Amen. But the fact that right. you couldn't answer this question or you couldn't rectify this point or your point just, your point just fell apart, then your argument is over. Mm-hmm. Now it just comes down to keeping your peace and showing whether you really Love God or not. That's just it. Amen. Thank you, preacher. God bless you. Man, well said. Well said. Brother Free. Amen. Um, I wanted to just piggyback on what you mentioned about tongues and First Corinthians 14. Uh-huh. It says, uh, I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesy is greater. Mm-hmm. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, mm-hmm. except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, brethren... If I come unto you speaking with tongues, it says, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation, knowledge, prophesying, or by doctrine? And even things without life, giving sound, whether the pipe, harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped the harp? For if the trumpet given in a certain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, ye except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? Amen. Or ye shall speak it to the air. And when you look at verse uh, 28, I mean 27, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it by, be by two, or at the most by three, mm-hmm. and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to him uh, and to God. And so, Amen. Yeah, the order in the church, how it was set up, you know, I'm looking at it. You know, these saints, they become, became uh, instantly uh, bilingual, trilingual, you know, by God's power, by God's hand. Yeah. And But you needed an interpreter, you That's know, right. so those churches that are saying they can speak in tongues and tongues of angels, there's always the tongues of angels mm-hmm. that, they, that they say they can speak in, but they need, they don't have an interpreter, right. you know. And so here, the order and the rule for the church was you have to have an interpreter That's right. to translate it because the doctrine is supposed to be the same, mm-hmm. whether you're in Rome, Corinthia, Philippia, uh, uh, Galatia, wherever you're at, if the translator is translating in another mm-hmm. tongue miraculously, it has to look because Paul is mentioning, if I speak tongue, what shall I probably accept? I shall speak unto you by revelation, knowledge, prophesying, or doctrine. Mm-hmm. And so he could be also be a prophet and a, a person that speaks in tongue. He could prophesy in another language. Mm-hmm. Now you got the interpreter interpreting. Mm-hmm. It has to be true prophecy because exactly it could be right. false prophecy in a different language, and the interpreter is the only one that's catching it. Mm-hmm. And he's got to recognize. Wait a second, you know, his guy's interpreting it false, Amen. or he's prophesying false. Uh, doctrine, knowledge, it has to be the doctrine of Christ. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you have to keep an eye on this. You know, in the time frame, this is something that mm-hmm. you know the saints have to watch for. You know what the brother was saying. You know, it just reminds me of uh, Elijah. What they were telling Elisha when they were talking about. You know, you know, he went to two different cities. I believe it was two or three. And the prophets in those other cities, they were prophesying the same thing. They were saying, "You know, your master, his head will be taken today." Mm-hmm. He said, "Yes, I know." And then he went to another city. You know, the prophets came up to him and told him the same thing. You know, your master will be taken. And talking about Elijah. Uh, Elijah. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, I know." Yeah. And so they were in agreement. And so whatever the the, the the saint was speaking in the tongue, it had to be the truth. And if he was prophesying, it would be better because it was just prophesying that language. Where then Galatia, Rome, uh, whatever city it was at, it was just speaking future events in that same language. Right. But if the saint was uh, speaking in the tongue, they had to interpret. Mm-hmm. They had to be an interpreter, and he had to check if it was true. Because if there was different... People saying speaking in tongues and someone was speaking false, they had to yes. hash it out. You know? That's right. They had to let's re- reverse back to our language. That's right. What did you just say? You know? And so I just want to bring that up. Amen. Out. Thank you, preacher. God bless you. That's beautiful because the denominational world does nothing like what that we just read. They have no control. And if they did, it would be nothing but lies. Because there's going to dispute. They would not let the dispute out. Thank you, preacher. Yeah, now, a person, may, a person may ask, well, like, what does that have to do with 
a saint may say, what does that have to do with us today because we don't speak in tongues or whatever, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> whatever. But, but, but all that the brother just mentioned shows the order of God exactly. and, and, and of truth. Yeah. There's a way that you can validate what is true and what is not. Amen. And, and that's, the brother just, he just laid out, wonderful job, my brother. Amen. He just laid out, like, if somebody came and says, well, everybody should be speaking in tongues in here. Uh -huh. It goes right back to the point. The scriptures have made it clear, like, no, that's that's not the case. Right. If somebody tries to stand on that platform, be like, well, yeah, yeah, you can't stand on that because the scriptures have already determined what is what is true and what is not. Right. Now, even if you believe that for whatever reason, you decide to believe that. Mm -hmm. You you still at that point you have to you you gonna prove your sincerity whether mm -hmm. you are honest and say, okay, well then. I must be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you're going to double down and show that you really are a heretic. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? <clears throat> God, the word of God is 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 light. That's right. It illumin it, it gives you understanding and sight. Mm -hmm. And and so you have to you but you have to accept the light. Amen. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Because you are blind. You can't see. It's only it's only by the light that you're able to see, mm -hmm. and it's so important that you that all of us understand that because you have to respect the light, mm -hmm. you have to right. appreciate the light. That's right. And by light, I want I want to be very clear: it's the Word of God, right. the understanding. It ain't just the reading of the words yeah. or like carrying around the Bible. It's it's reading it, understanding it, exactly. and living and trusting in it, right. and it will illuminate you know, a path in your life. Not only in this right. life. But the life to come, Amen. you have to you have to let go of whatever you thinking that you know or whatever your passion, whatever like, and say, well then, if I find myself on the wrong side mm -hmm. of the word of God, then I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. It's 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 okay. Right. All you gotta do is change. That's, right. That's all you gotta do is accept the truth. And you may not okay. And here's the thing, I'm gonna cover back. And you may accept the truth that statement that's made, and you may not have the rest of the understanding, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I may, I may have thought, oh well. I come from Pentecostal church, and when I was in there, everybody spoke in tongues. Mm -hmm. And then Javier just read the scripture like, well, nah, oh, you read the scripture. Do all speak in tongues? Mm -hmm. And I sit back and be like, hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But all, do all, are all prophets, are all apostles, are all teachers? You know the answer. You know, you know the answer to that question. Now, everybody not a teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everybody don't speak in tongues. Oh, man, I thought. Now, now you may say, okay, I, I understand that. But I don't understand all the other questions I may have in my head about speaking in tongues. Cool, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Keep your mouth closed mm -hmm. and be taught. Right. Exactly. Learn. You see what I'm saying? Like, learn. That's it. That's all you got to do is just learn. Right. Ask questions. What other scriptures you got? Take a look at them. Study them. Learn. Figure out exactly what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Then you have the understanding. Then you can move forward with a with in, 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 in a path of illumination. You see what I'm saying? Like, exactly. I can see, like you said. God help me to where I can put everything in place where it needs yeah, to be. Yeah, amen. That's the power of God. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I know it, I can see everything I need to see. Exactly. I don't have to move with any kind of fear or apprehension because I know exactly what I need to do. That's right. In whatever situation I'm dealing with, that's that's the power that God is is given us. And so I, I don't want to say that because like sometimes you may have a you may have a, a, a doctrine in your head. Somebody brings up a scripture that puts a chink in your in your it show, it yes, cracks sir. the foundation of your <laughs> of your belief, right? Yeah. And and so you may not have all the answers after that, mm -hmm. and that's okay. You don't have to panic. Just learn, right? And God will reveal all these things that you don't understand, Philippians, right. right? And so like, but I but I know that this ain't right. I know that is right, and I can build from now. You see that's what I'm right. saying? Exactly. I know what I what I thought before wasn't right. Right. But I understand that, that that's right. All oh, don't speak in tongues. Okay, cool. Right. Well, then I can start from here and I can find the truth. I can exactly. find the rest of the pieces I need yes. if I just start and hold on to this truth that I have. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so, I'm telling you, I'm sorry, forget no, it. No, but no, like, that's, this is what we want. be honest and humble enough. And that's something me and others we talked about all the time. Like, <clears throat> you may not have all the answers, you may mm -hmm. not understand everything clearly. But hold on to the truth that you do have, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you build from there. That's right. This ain't gonna change. Okay, I know this. I can see this. This ain't gonna change. So as I navigate and I learn, I can always refer to this truth mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I can build from here. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Exactly. And that's how you're able to grow in knowledge and understanding because once you learn something that's true, it don't ever change. Mm -hmm. It's going to always stay the same. Just like A becomes for B and B comes for C, mm -hmm. you may not know all the other alphabets, but you know it starts with A, B, C. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right, yeah, and then you exactly. can find out with D and E, yeah. you know what I'm saying? All right. the way to now, now I know my A, B, C. Exactly. Next time, you know what I'm saying? Right. Won't you see? Be like, but it starts with A, B, C. Exactly. That's it. God bless you. Preach. Man, this is so good. You know, this is so good because this is what's wrong with the Jerusalem church. This is actually what's wrong with them. They have had someone holding a thought, and as you said, you got to hold on to truth, because in Revelation it says, hold fast of that which remains while it remains. And you hold on to what you got. And this letter, you read this letter, and you're going to find out who's doing what, and you, then you can take care of that portion. Then you start letting go of all the different things that you once had. It's going to, I've seen people do it, it's going to be chaotic, it's going to be tragic. And there will be no remedy available other than repentance. So God bless you, Brother Frizz and Brother uh, Dwayne. God bless you all. The wonderful statement. And this is what we desire because this can happen to any congregation. Because while they're going through it, Peter, nobody just stands up and goes, hey, we didn't send those guys. It's not because, you know, we didn't send them, but. And we are kind of thinking we can hold on to some of this stuff. And so now it becomes a discussion. So, you know, as we see, as we wrap up, actually, matter of fact, I appreciate sure Brother Hamilton saying the word wrong. Because when we started out, I wanted to, I got so into the lesson. I wanted to tell y'all, I did make a statement in part 15. This is 16, I made it seven part 15, Sunday Bible, uh, Sunday worship, uh, where we were talking about this. And one of the things was, as I said, that, the fool will release the bow. Now, that's not in the Bible. It's a fact. A fool, only a fool will let the bow go because when you bring more arrows, he's done. It's not, it's a weapon that hurls. But you can't let that go because that, without that, you can't hurl what you need to pierce. The Lord uses a bow. I was talking about it metaphorically and he uses it to hurl what he's saying. So, but that's not in the Bible. I heard a brother say that years ago. <laughs> Ignorantly, I thought it was in the Bible, Brother Fritz said, where is that at? Because he's interested. I have to text him back. It is not in the Bible. Forgive me. So I'm telling y'all now, and I tell the saints Sunday, too, you know, forgive me for that. It's not in the Bible. Good thought is not in the Bible. You know, fact, there's a lot of facts that's not in the Bible, you know. It's just a, it's a fact of life, you know. <laughs> amen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, yeah. Amen, amen. So God be praising. Why we want to do this? Is because you want to always, and this is what I was thanking God for, is that accumulates to where you recognize things have to be positioned properly throughout all that you speak, say, and do. And if you see you knocked a cup over and it spilled, I'm just go. It's no problem. Nobody gonna walk over there. You know, people say, "Don't pick it up, wipe it up." You know, uh, because it's it. That's not normal. Have a spilled cup on the floor with water dripping out. So you don't want anything said that's not valid because it, it's inconsistent. Because you're trying to make a point another time, and then that's not in the Bible. So you have to have your mind understanding the word bow and arrows in the Bible, not that statement. Praise God. While y'all were talking, while y'all were talking, it made me think about the scripture that says, uh, how can how can you walk, how can two walk except they agree? Amen. And it just made me think that because um, us being in the faith, like and you've been in the faith for a while, or maybe not because uh, the one who asked to buy the Holy Ghost, he was in the faith for just a short amount of time. Amen. But just remembering that, like, it's God who revealed this stuff to us. It's Amen. not of ourselves that, like, we are so smart that we came up with this, you know? <laughs> and so, and I, the Holy Spirit brought that scripture to my attention as far as how can two walk except they agree because, mm -hmm. like, people are so laxed in, like, like saints are, are laxed in, like, oh, we can, um... Well, we just weak. Let's just oh, like oh, I, I'm oh. like uh, I talked to a sister who I love, and she was saying, um, uh, you know, some brothers were teaching about baptism and that 
other folks can come in and not be baptized. If they were baptized from the Baptist church, they can oh, come into the oh, faith oh. as long as they were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh. And she was saying that, like, well, um, you know, I hope that our elders do change. And we, oh. we're weak and we really need me to have to accept that. And it's just like, but, you, you know, and she did say, you know, well, um, maybe God will give me strength. I'm like, I can't tell her. I, I'm like, go and talk to them, you know, right. like, like, don't just like, like, yeah, I mean, like, okay, she's like, well, wait until the opportunity may come. Nope. Well, I mean, yes. like, this is very serious. Very serious. This yeah. is a serious thing. Like, exactly. there are weightier matters, and there are things that maybe you can wait on and talk about later. Exactly. The scriptures teach that. Yeah. But this is a weighty, very weighty matter. So, for you to be like, so, like, we're weak, and like, it's like, no, like, you're going to be going to worship every week. Every day, you know, like every Sunday, yeah. and then you're going to see this person every Wednesday, uh -huh. and like, like, yeah. how can you say we're of the same faith, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. I believe this, and you believe that, mm -hmm. and like... Like, how can we be on the same page if we both don't agree? Exactly. You understand exactly. what the Holy exactly. Spirit is so saying? Right. So it's just like, we, and it's not like biting and devouring. Biting and no, devouring, biting yeah. devouring yeah. is teaching false doctrine. Yeah. That's exactly. what biting and devour is. Because exactly. they yeah. were teaching about circumcision, yeah. and that was tearing the saints up. That's yeah. biting and devour. Well said. So, like, yeah. it's just like, we have to agree. We have to. Where two or more, he said, didn't he say that? I'm yeah. in the midst. He yeah. said, where there are two. Yeah. Didn't he say that? So yeah. when you think about that, there's a scripture. So it's mm -hmm. just like, we got to believe. Amen. We can't just be like, believe, this person don't believe, that person holding a doctrine in their heart. And it's like, God does, that's not okay. Exactly. Because he exactly. said that. He said, I'm upset with y'all because yeah. she's they holding the doctrine of what it was Jezebel yeah. Yeah, yeah, or who yeah. was she it was in the Re her, Revelation? Another church at Balaam. Yeah, and Lady it's Lord. like he <laughs> don't. That's <laughs> not okay with the Lord. No, not at all. You know. Man. God bless you, Tom. Thank you. So you know, all uh, this is so good because this is what the lesson is about. A church comes all the way to Antioch and destroy, but they go back. To Jerusalem to help, you know. But the idea—it's sad that Antioch, you know, doesn't go go and help them. They go go and discuss the matter. Like man, they—they're debate. This is what happens: a sound church will have somebody come in and bring an idea, and they, and then the other brethren will attack because they like the idea, and, and and then when it's time to go correct them. They get mad, but that's not how it works because for that much, Antioch Pasha said, look, this is the way it is. We're not doing nothing. Y'all like here, go, you know, but you have to go and help that church because that church in Jerusalem, just because the gospel started there doesn't mean they're going to stay right. The One of the points I want to bring forward, the gospel started right where they're at, but it didn't stick always. And that's what we have to understand. Somebody may start off real good, you know, and you love they may not stick because the heart can change. And that's the thing God wants us to understand. The heart can change. So as we see him, as we wrap this up, he, we now understand that Peter rises up. His brother had to read. They gave audience to Barnabas and Paul. Now look what happens. So you got Peter there. Barnabas and Paul get allowed to speak in verse 12. Audience keeps silent. Declare what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Now look at that. And they had held their peace. Once again, as Brother Hamilton advised, they kept quiet more. James answered, saying, Me and the brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon, that would be Peter, had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take them out, take out them a, a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophet. Once again, here we go. The word agrees as it's written. And this I will return. After this I will return. This is the Lord speaking from the Old Testament. And will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up. So he quotes an Old Testament scripture. So there's nothing else you can do now. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord 
and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things? Known unto God are all Israel from the beginning of the world. Again, another factual statement, which I got to go, yeah, that's true. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. See, the key is from the Gentiles to God, not Gentiles, proselyte to God. And this is something Peter's going to struggle with later, which we covered Peter in an earlier lesson. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. What does that mean? What it says. It's like, man, they all know this. This type of information has been floating around because the synagogues now, so they shouldn't be like, well, no, hold on. Let's be like, hey, man, no, you know, you got to know this is in Moses' writing. So this should be solid for you as new Christians to understand, you know, this is not going anywhere. This idolatry and nonsense, that's not leaving. So, but the circumcision, obeying the Moses' commandments and doing all saying this is what the seven day Adventists cannot accept when you do this this is bona fide real saints because as they heard Old Testament scripture said New Testament prophecies being told and things happening New Testament reports of Gentiles going straight from idolatry to serving God Holy Ghost signifying hey they can come in now because why is this important the Bible had a rule and regulation that at one time you couldn't even go to the temple if you were a certain belief system. Even if you wanted, it was like, okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, don't let them in. It was like, because God say they are deadly poisoning you for so many years and then you can let them be pro -side. So what happened to them? They went to hell. Why? Because the Lord knew if you let them in, they're going to come in and act like they're witches and they're going to rip apart the sheep. God has the knowledge and he knows, okay, after so many years, then you can let them come in. And then once everybody starts coming in, pro light start. Now we have to understand when Paul wanted to go to Asia, the Holy Ghost told him no. What was happening to them? They went to hell and didn't obey Moses. That's what. Because they're still under that regime. He said, I don't want you to enter there yet. Then I'll let you know why. Because the Lord, the Father is saying, this is how I want it done. Tell him no. It's, it's, it's God's program. It is his dispensation of time and not all. And this is where a lot of saints are getting off at. And we're getting off. We're getting on the wrong track. Because as you said, that thing about baptism, <laughs> that's like, that's like, why even go to church and not going to be a saint? Don't be like saying, oh, I'm on the Moses. No, I don't have to be circumcised. You have to. If you're a male, so even they, you know, under that regime, Brother Fred. Yeah, good teaching, my brother. I uh, just wanted to read uh, Acts 8, verse 30, uh, through 29. It says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself uh, to this chariot. Amen. And, you know, Philip ran thither yeah. to him. And so he didn't say, you know, I, don't, you don't tell me what to do. You know, he didn't tell the Holy Ghost that. Amen. He didn't tell the Holy Ghost, what am I, you slave? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he didn't start talking back to the Holy Ghost. God bless you, preacher. Yeah, I got things yeah. to do, you know, yeah. but uh, right. today you, yeah. you see that where the doctrine is already laid out. Yeah. It's settled in heaven. You got uh, mm -hmm. saints, a leadership. You got men, sisters, where they're bucking up to the Holy Ghost. Yes, you know, they, yes. Who, and who are you? Yeah. You know, that's the Holy Spirit. He's, yeah. You know, he inspired exactly. men to write this. That's and right. so, you know, Philip was obedient, you know. Amen. First, the angel told him, right. uh, verse 26, mm -hmm. Arise, go toward the south mm -hmm. to the way that go it down from Jerusalem to Gaza, mm -hmm. which is in desert. Then the Holy Ghost told him after. So he didn't buck up to the he angel. Didn't even, yeah, God he didn't buck up to the Holy Ghost. Nobody. He was obedient, you know. Praise but God. you Praise got God. men they, today yeah. in the world, they, they, you tell them how to be saved, they just... Yeah. I don't believe it. I don't think yeah. so. Thank you, Brother Fritz. God bless you. Man, it's been a great class. Look here, saints. I got to tell you something. That brother just read something that... Now, what about Peter? Not so, Lord. That's a powerful analogy. How come Philip didn't say, not so, spirit? You know? I mean, so we got to realize, man, Peter is like all saints will get sometimes if they're not careful. I'm going a little bit, you know, uh-uh. No, I, I spoke good here. I did good. Two thumbs up, you know. But I'm still going to slide later because I just can't handle 
eating with these idolaters. They don't want to hear about the law. We know they're not proselytes. We're not having Bible studies. It's like James pressures his little crew pressures him, and him and Barnabas out because this is what we have to watch. You, you cannot alter the doctrine. We must be obedient and brethren. We must. I'm looking at Brother Hamilton. I'm laughing because I remember him, him saying, I remember him saying, you have to have a healthy fear of the law. It must be healthy, man, like a muscle man. I fear him. As Brother Fred pointed out, you don't argue. You know, that's, well, you just say, hey, are you an angel? You're not in the Godhead. You know, hey, man, hold up, man. Look, I appreciate you coming to me. And I love you. And we all brethren. Like Brother Fred said, he, he did what the angel said. Come the Holy Ghost. I'm with you. And that's how we need to be. But when we see those words, you know, you can look at the words of an angel and dispute it. You know, that was an angel said that, you know. You know, he said, I, I, he ain't not God here. But uh, Brother Fred's giving us a pattern which is important because what they're rejecting is the words of not only angels, but the Holy Ghost, Jesus, and the Father. It's like, man, if it come from heaven, I'm, uh -uh, no. You know, so we don't want to be that way. <laughs> we don't want to be that way. God be praised. God bless you. We're going to close out at this time. Um, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3. We'll end with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul says, For I deliver you first of all that which also I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Shows who saw him. Now look at Mark. This is unusual because all Jesus is asking, or one of the things he's asking is that just go out and teach this. Go into all the world, Mark 16, 15, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe in baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be down. That should be no confusion on what to say. I mean, you got people teaching different things, which is ridiculous. Then we see in Acts 2, Peter seems to have it down. He seems to have it. No voice from heaven. Don't say that. It just, he flows. Acts 2, 30 said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made the same Jesus and crucified by the Lord of Christ. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. See, the heart is pricked. And said unto Peter, to rest the of men and brothers, what shall we do? And then Peter says, I repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, all that are fought, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And many of the words that he testified in his heart, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly receive his word are baptized, saying that they were added to them about 3,000 souls. Would they continue in steadfastly? Verse 4 to the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Acts 2 47. Praising God and have faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So now we have an example of them standing fast without Jesus. They are breathing down their shoulder physically. And they stuck to the word of God. Look at Acts 8 and verse number 34. Now this gentleman is intelligent but he has a question. And the eunuch answered Philip and said. I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself. Or some other man. Because Philip said do you understand what you read? He didn't go who are you? Like, you challenge him. You do know who I am? You know, <laughs> then Philip opened his mouth against the Sanskrit and preaching to him, Jesus. As they went on the way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here's water, but the hell of me to be baptized. Philip said, If I believe with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered, said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the to stand still, went down, boat to the water, but Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Look at the rejoicing after. Why so much joy? Well, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13 is going to say someone else is involved with this baptism. And it says there's a spiritual force here for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. What's the body? Colossians 1.18 says the church. Whether we Jews or Gentiles, we're born or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. The joy is he saved. How do we know? 1 Peter 3.21 the like figure while to eat baptism is also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And who is he? He is gone into heaven on the right hand of God, angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. The Son of God has taken his position back at the right hand of the Father. Now we understand, well, what should the righteous do? Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt some of behold a devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful in the death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Someone will always rise up. I've already been baptized. Well, let's see what the Lord says about an individual that's been baptized and thinks that they're saved, but are not. 
Acts 19, 1, it came to pass that while apostles at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He didn't say gangsters and rapists, disciples. He said to them, I received the Holy Ghost since you believe. They said, oh, well, not so much to her where that be in the Holy Ghost. Why don't you just leave them alone? Well, leave them alone, Paul. Why don't you go baptize somebody who talks about who don't know nothing about Jesus? Well, he just not the pattern. You have to know the truth. And he said to them, uh, unto what day were you baptized? They said to John, about to, now it's time to go, right? Oh, John is from heaven. His message from heaven. He baptized Jesus. It's not valid. Then said Paul, John, Verily, baptized with baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should be on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And here it is, they're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I can't understand why a prayer wouldn't be sufficient as it is today in some's mind, because it is not sufficient. They have to be baptized again. So now that I know that, everybody else should understand that when they hear it. So now to be baptized into Christ, which will place me in the church, our be filled with the spirit. I will be placed. I will be secured. And then now as Brother Hamilton pointed out, light will come to my mind. As Brother Free has pointed out, I will be faithful to the words of the angel and unto the Godhead as well. If we can believe that it's an opportunity for you to get baptized. If you have not been baptized, hold up your hand. If you're here, you feel your baptism is not valid. You can be baptized again. If you're listening to the message, you're not baptized. You feel your baptism is faulty. You also can call the number such a word M-O-R-E under this particular title and then you will too see several phone numbers. You can call those numbers and you'll be able to converse with those individuals. They can tell you what route you take, whether it be counseling, more information needed, questions you may have, uh, desires to be answered, directions on where to go, connection with other saints that are there. And we don't have a headquarters on earth, the headquarters in heaven. But we do have knowledge, and we do know when we talk to a brother who is of the faith, and our sister even, and she may say, well, my husband can baptize them because he's a member of the Lord's church too. And then we will get you secured. You will have opportunity. Uh, promote your spiritual life above all and promote your physical life as well and the spiritual and physical life of others. Do not take life. Our job is to be like Christ, to give life. We cannot give life spiritually, and like some do, take life physically. That is not going to work either, so we have to understand that. Whatever you need by way of prayer, baptism, come now, where together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. Oh, 